Do alienating parents understand that turning a child against their other parent will only end up with that child hating the abusive parent? And why don't they understand this? So let me add to this first. That actually is not always the case, unfortunately. You know, sometimes that does happen. And once, you know, I've talked with a number of people that have said that, yes, they did realize later on that the alienated parent was the abusive parent. But on the other hand, I've got my stepfather and he um, faithfully paid child support. He was also divorced against his will and paid child support for 18 years. Um, his ex-wife made it so difficult for him to see the kids that it was easier not to because everything became a big crisis and you know, police would be involved in everything else. But he has not seen his kids basically for 30 some years. And when he wants to reach out to them, they'll say, well, you haven't been around. Um, so why should we talk to you now? Because they've been poisoned. And that's exactly what it is. Poisoning the minds of your children. Um, it's inexcusable. But sometimes they don't realize because that's all that they know. They've been poisoned. They don't realize that they have been poisoned. They have no frame of reference. How about yourself, Brandon? Right. What do you think about, uh, about that? The alienating parent, whether they're actually aware of the fact that this is eventually going to come around. Karma does eventually pay them a visit. We always hope so. <laughs> uh, you know, that's something that uh, has been, um, as I've become, you know, vocal, and I haven't shared my, this is probably the first time I've actually personally uh, shared my story on a, on a live video. And, um, you know, or, you know, there's outside of, I, I've kept it pretty private like a lot of people do. And, you know, a lot of men, and I'll get to answer your question, but a lot of people say, and I've had men approach me who understand, they, they know because they've been through it, and they say, hey, one day your kids will know, you know, just just basically suffer through it. And I really, it, it's a, I don't know what, it's a difficult thing when you're actually talking about this specific issue. Um because as Jeff said, some of these kids get so brainwashed that they really believe the lie. And, um, you know, Christy Beck, uh, I, I went to Dr. Childress's, uh, symposium up in, uh, Plano that Wendy Perry put on, you know, and these people said, you know, one of them, I don't remember which one it was, is it was, it was either that or Dorsey, maybe Dorsey Pruder, but she said, hey, m my dad, he he's almost dead <laughs> when she found out that he wanted to be active in her life. Yeah. And it screwed her whole life up, you know. And now, of course, like you say, she doesn't have a um, um, relationship with her mom. So I don't know. I mean, that's the only thing that I can figure out is just like, hey, if I'm active in my kid's life, even if it is only four days a month, they'll figure it out. But it doesn't have to be that way. And and that's the thing is we got to focus on the root cause of the issue. Parental alienation is a symptom of, of basically what you have is grown-up brats. Okay? I mean, they didn't get a spanking when they were young. Never heard the word no. And then they have a community of people who don't tell them no. You know, like my, my ex-wife, and this is very, very common. You know, her her whole social infrastructure, her mom, her dad, her pastor, her church, her best friend, all these folks aid and abet this. That's right. You know, and, and that's the thing. It's a, um, and so for me, what do you, how do you tell a child? There's two things. Okay, yeah. One Somebody in this girl's life, in all of these alienating parents' life, needs to step up and say, look, what you're doing is wrong. Nobody, I mean, you don't have to like the other parent. You don't have to even get along with the other parent. But that, that doesn't, and maybe they're a, 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 a total, you know, mean person, <laughs> for lack of a better, I mean, I don't even know what they think about me. I mean, but I'm some kind of animal. Look, I'm not abusive. If you're a fit, willing, and able parent, you should have access to your kid, period. So what happens is you have these, these grown-up brats who are aided by their social structure, 
And then the state benefits off of, and I, I heard you say this on the, or <laughs> Cornell, uh, uh, earlier he was talking about the pimp situation. Mm -hmm. The state facilitates this by pimping out our women and children who think that they are mighty <laughs> and they're prostitutes. Mm -hmm. And we're the customer. So this is all done under a false premise, and the state it's is benefiting. It's basically taking family drama and turning it into revenue. Absolutely. That's what they're doing. It. I mean, they, these women ought to be just, I mean, they're just standing out on the street corner. They don't even realize. See, the prostitute always gets her money, and the pimp gets his, and we're the customers. Hey, Sean, let, let, me, let me add to pulled out. Actually, quick question, uh, quick note I want to add here. Uh, Gabriel... Uh, was able to to uh, comment. He says, "The allowance of fraud and lies in family courts is harboring criminals and crimes." He says, "Basically, it's erasing family lim family lineage through no contact." That's right. You know, and Gabriel makes that point. Who are you, Sean? You are a product of your father, of your father's father, of your father father's father. And this goes back to, I mean, this is the core. I mean, it's, it's so difficult. You know, here we are. We're, we're, parent alienation is a symptom of, I, I don't care if you call it, uh, you know, socialism or whatever, but basically it's where the state takes control of their daddy now. And this has been going on since the beginning of time. <laughs> and I, I don't want to, I don't know your audience, but I'll just, uh, I'm a scriptural based guy. And then I, and then you line it up with history and you make it all work. But, but this has been going on from, from the beginning of time. Uh, they allow the drama to occur, but they'll place a lot of different fines along the way during the course of this drama and someone's going to pay those fines. And this is an example of, uh, of, of that. So, now, hey, Sean, can, can I address something that Brandon was alluded to? Mm -hmm. So he talked about the social support structure. And, you know, it used to be that the social structure would approve of things or disapprove of things. And right now it just seems like in many instances, the people that are around a person who may be considered a narcissist or who may be exhibiting the alienating behavior, they support the person. Like, you know, you're right. You've got to protect the kids. You've got to protect the grandkids or whatever. And, and it gets really bad when, when that happens. But, you know, even sometimes, as Brandon was saying, you know, you have people around you like parents, the church, um, family law attorneys. You have people right now, um, you know, people that actually, instead of saying what's right and wrong, all they do is try to comfort and support the person. Sometimes you can go to a church and ask for help and the church has believed without any evidence all of these things that your ex-wife or somebody has said about you. I was shocked when I went to the church for help and they said, well, we heard about you. You dragged your wife around the house by the hair. I said, what? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I went to the same church again. And, and this is crazy because, you know, this was the church. They knew me. They actually raised money to help an Iraqi family out when I, you know, from Jordan. And then um, I was told that I, I went to the church for help. And instead of getting any help, they told me how bitter and angry I was. And by the way, if I ever came to the church again, um, I could be subject to being arrested for trespassing. And I'm like, this is craziness. Absolutely. Let, let me ask a question. So, so she made an accusation. Was there anything that would be remotely considered evidence to back up that accusation? Or was this an accusation that she made and everyone took her at face value? I didn't even know who made the accusation, but I, I went, so I, I took my, my, went out with my daughter and I said, I, I said, okay, maybe I've fallen asleep sometime and I did this in my sleep. There was one time my ex-wife gave me a, a check and I signed it in my sleep and I'm like, okay. It, I asked my daughters, did this ever happen? No, this never happened. Nobody knows anything about it. <laughs> Talked to my ex-wife and I was the nicest, sweetest guy, you know, the most gentle guy in the world. All of a sudden now this pastor is telling me, but I am dragging my ex-wife around the house by her hair. And I'm like, when did this happen? <laughs> no, there was nothing that, that happened like that. But I mean, this is how crazy it gets. So did that lead to anything like, um, I'm trying to find a motivation for saying that other than I'm angry because I didn't get my way. So 
uh, I know a lot of uh, lawyers will ins will under the table instruct their clients to make a claim of abuse so they can get a restraining order or at least to get uh, an order to keep you from approaching the house within you know 500 feet or whatever the case might be is that did that occur or is that potentially what the well, this, was I, I have no clue because like I said I don't even know where this came from but I did I will tell you one thing that after uh, my ex-wife you know got her divorce was remarried um, I went out to see my daughter because my daughter was living at the house at that time and um, and I get one out to give her money at Christmas time December the 27th money for her and for my grandson because she could not make that at Christmas time because it was an accident um, my grandson had fallen off the bed, banged his head or something like that. So I went out there to do that. And I was only going to be out there for 15 minutes, give her the money, turn around and come back. I, it was a mutual time that we could both be together. My ex-wife was supposed to be not there. And then as I, I'm out in front of the house giving her the money, she starts. my daughter starts talking. And I'm thinking, well, if my daughter starts talking, I'm going to listen. She's talking about college. She's talking about this, that, and everything else. And, and I'm playing with my grandson. So, I mean, I want to take every moment that I can I was on the street and I was across the street and lo and behold, while this is going on. And again, this is two days after Christmas, <laughs> 2004, uh, yeah, 2013, I think it was, um, all of a sudden two police cars come down and my daughter said, Oh no, they're coming after me. And I said, no, they're coming after me. And lo and behold, the two police cars are followed by my ex-wife and her new husband, who by the way, was formerly a, a pastor. And uh, I guess, but anyway, we'll, we won't go into that. <laughs> If you enjoyed the show and want to see more, join our Facebook page called Man Cave by Gentlemen United. All of our shows, tons of additional content, and invitations to future shows are posted there. You can add to the conversation and suggest future discussion topics. Please like, comment, share, and most of all, subscribe by clicking the Gentlemen United icon. I promise it's free. Thanks again for joining us in the Man Cave. Enjoyed the show? Like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for joining us in the Man Cave.